below. Whoa. All right, audio seems to be working. All right, can you all hear me? All right. Anyway, so uh, yeah, welcome to the stream. Thank you all for uh, joining. I'm hoping that a couple more people are going to be coming in a bit. But uh, yeah, so welcome to this stream. And today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking apart this great iMac. So this is the uh, same iMac that got destroyed in shipping uh, not too long ago. And I've been wanting to take it apart to like clean it up and just like do some stuff in general. And I plan on maybe getting like a parts computer and repairing the case. But for now, I guess we're just going to have to uh, take it apart and see what's going to happen. I plan on doing a full teardown in this stream. So it might be a bit long, but I'm hoping it won't be too long. But we'll see how it all plays out. So anyway, I was expecting a couple more people to come. There only seems to be like two people watching, unfortunately. But uh, maybe some more people will come in, uh, in a bit. So uh, I'll actually ask and see if anyone's going to join the stream right now. Alright, so, let everyone know that I'm streaming, so now let's actually get to this. So, uh, some of the things that, some of the difficulties that we might have with uh, taking this thing apart is, uh, is the uh, whole CRT is kind of like loose in the uh, case, and as you can see, there's this beige piece behind the case that, uh, that uh, holds CRT in place, and that has been destroyed in shipping, so it's kind of like loosey in there, and you can move it, actually, which is not very good, but we're going to, uh, yeah, so we're going to be um, opening it up. And also, if you guys want, you can ask me questions about things. For example, like what I'm in next, or like some other channel things, you know, what my next video is going to be. You can ask me uh, a lot of different channel-related questions. So, uh, yeah, so anyway, let's get started. So we seem to have three people watching. It's pretty nice. Uh, we want to make problems with this. Yeah, some of the screws are snapped on this because uh, because a lot of computer companies mount the metal screws right onto the plastic, which does get brittle over time. Which is why um, which is why old power books and stuff and like these things suffer these uh, issues, and it's really annoying. So uh, yeah, and then I had to put my Emac restoration on pause. Yep. Remember that from a couple of minutes ago, but anyway, yeah. So this iMac, if you're wondering, does work, and the only issue that it has is the CD drive doesn't work, and there's a disc stuck in there. I'm not sure what's in there, but uh, we're gonna open it up and find out. I'm probably th probably just gonna part it out and get all the useful parts, and just maybe get a broken computer or just a regular case and repair it. But uh, yeah, so we're just gonna be completely taking it. So anyway, I got my toolbox here. So let's actually take this apart. So to take apart an iMac. Um, you basically what you want to do is turn it over first. And this is something kind of dangerous with this because the CRT is inside there, as I said before. Yeah, that was a pleasant noise. But uh, yeah, so anyway. Uh, yeah, so anyway, let me just get a uh, coin. There's a uh, RAM door on the top here that requires a coin to open, so uh, yeah, but uh, so we got to get that open. But, yeah, now that's open. Uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, another useful thing about the stream is that it might be a good way to rewatch this if you do need to, like, a complete teardown on an iMac, so that's a good thing, so anyway, 
Uh, we're going to start off by taking this thing apart. So what you're probably going to need is a uh, set of uh, screwdrivers like this boy. And you're also going to need a small flathead screwdriver for taking off covers and doors and stuff like this thing. So, yeah, so the first thing you want to do is you want to take off this bottom door here. This usually covers the VGA port, which is used for connecting external monitors to the computer. And this one does have VGA because it's the fancy GV model that when it came out. So, anyway, so there's four screws under here. If you want to just take off the bottom case, you only need to remove two, the two screws on the end. But I'm going to be removing um, all of them. So, yeah, but I'm still going to remove the two screws on the end first. That's what I do. So anyway, I'm going to use a size 2 Phillips head. And uh, does your iMac G3 have a DVD drive? Uh, yes, it does have a DVD drive. Um, so I actually have an older version of this computer, the, which is the, uh, which is the uh, uh, grape. And it actually came with the DVD, it came with Bugs Life. Because Steve Jobs must have wanted to promote Pixar after working there. So... So yeah, that's uh, so. This thing does have a DVD drive. Uh, hello, hello, Mac Attack, and yeah, we seem to have six watch watching now, which is pretty nice. So anyway, I'm gonna open this up now. So we'll start by removing these two screws here. Uh, and then these other screw. And if you're wondering, the reason why I make these videos, like make streams like this, and so I'm making these in videos, is because. Usually things like this take a while and are kind of pain to edit. And I'd rather do it in stream anyway because it's just easier for people to follow along. And I don't feel like uploading a one hour video because then that would take way too long. So anyway, there's two more screws in the front near where these uh, where the plastic stand is. So that's one screw and then there's one more screw. And then uh, yeah, we should be good. Uh, all right, there we go. So now what you want to do is you want to lift up on the back, and like 50 pieces of plastic just fell out. You want to lift up on the back, and things now open. So we're gonna. So the first part we got off of this is this front case piece, and this is actually not broken anywhere, not cracked. So that's already a pretty good piece that we can salvage from this thing. All right, next up. Now that we're inside the thing, there's like a lot of stuff falling out. Like this chunk, there's a bunch of chunks here, more chunks here, lots of plastic. But uh, oh, we seem to have two RAM chips in there, which is nice. So, gonna get the screwdriver. So, the next part we're gonna take off is this uh, grill heating part. Jesus Christ, that's a lot of broken plastic. Hell yeah, it is. So much broken plastic. You have a whole top part of this. Uh, plastic, a beige plastic part is like completely, it was completely annihilated in shipping, so that's really depressing. So that thing is basically far beyond repair at this point. Some people suggested gluing it back together, but there's just way too many parts to keep track of, so unfortunately I won't be able to do that. So I'm, I'm, it's probably going to go in like the garbage or something, so yeah, but anyway, uh, yeah, so we, I'm going to continue taking off these screws. I just have to get the garbage can just just because I have this little can that I'm gonna put all the broken plastic pieces in. As you can see, it's already pretty full. So like the whole top piece that like disconnected here. So yeah, but anyway. Uh, it's basically a jigsaw puzzle with a lot of small pieces. Yeah, that's basically it. And hello ancient Mac, nice to see you tuned in. Eight people watching now. This is pretty nice. I did advertise on my server and Mac Yak server that I was going to be streaming, so I'm hoping. So I was hoping to get at least 10, 10 people watching. And so far, we have more than enough, so that's pretty good. But that doesn't mean go offline. This is going to be a pretty fun stream. So as I said before, you guys can ask questions about like future videos, systems, or just anything in general, and I can give you my uh, honest opinion or just suggestions for whatever you may have. Say hi to me, Charlie. Hello. Oh, it's my sister. Jesus. Kill me. Anyway. Uh, yeah. But, uh, I recognize it's from r slash vintage, vintage Mac. It's unfortunate, but we can, but we, I can wait and see the finished product. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's pretty sad. So I did post about this on r slash vintage Mac, and, uh, 
yeah, this is the same computer. So that's pretty, that's pretty neat that we have some people from there. But anyway, so we got this top grill part off, and I can't believe my sister's here. This is awful. So just ignore her, please. So anyway, uh, but yeah, now we're in here, and this is the fun stuff. So what we have here is we have a, we have a, we have the boards, and these boards all work as well as the speakers, so these will be salvageable. There's a PRAM battery in here that we're going to pop out and toss because it's probably dead and I don't want it to explode. And that's what I recommend doing on a lot of old Macs is that you want to take out the PRAM battery and get rid of it. So, yeah. Uh, five watching now. Looks like a bunch of people left, probably because of my sister. So that's lovely. But anyway, so we're going to take out this RAM now. So yeah, we got two sticks of RAM. So what do we got? We got uh, one of them's a uh, uh, it's probably like 128 megabytes total of RAM. So that's good. Put that to the side. All right, what do we got next? So uh, next up, uh, we should probably take out. Uh, yeah, we have to take out these speakers first because it's impossible to take out this power supply board without taking out the speakers. So speakers are kind of difficult on these things. You have to. They have like these little. Uh, pieces here that like you have to like bend and pull out. Uh, vintage Apple core is coming. Nice. Are you gonna take apart take it apart for parts? I'm probably gonna yeah, I'm probably gonna take this apart for parts because um, the case is all broken. Or I'm just gonna buy a donor computer, like a broken computer and put the working parts in that. It's kind of like a your vintage Mac has a time bomb or a nuclear reactor that might explode any minute. Yeah, that's basically the PRAM battery in a nutshell, so you might want to take that out if you have one that does have it. And yeah, we seem to have Mac Yak on here, which is pretty nice. So, hello. Ugh. Let me know if you want me to... Let me know if you want to feature me on your show. I don't know. Probably not, but who cares. Anyway. Yeah, now we're going to get to the super annoying long part, which is picking up the speakers. You have to, like, push down on this part here and, like, wedge it out. You have to, like, really fiddle with them until they actually do come out. Uh, this is Greg T, by the way. Oh, hey, hey, Greg. Nice to see you. And, uh, yeah, so, gotta take this, these two speakers out, as I said before. And we do actually have some pieces of plastic here, completely scratching my, uh, foam block down here. So I'm gonna take those away. In fact, I might actually just push this back and just clean that up quickly. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, they just see, yeah, just plastic seems to be coming out of everywhere, so this is going to make a huge mess. But, uh, yeah, it seems to be good now. So anyway, continuing with the uh, speakers, you want to, like, sort of loosen it up by bending it a bit and then, like, pulling it out from the... It's like, you go, like, a, a, a motion that's sort of like this. You, like, twist it back like this and you pull out like that. So, uh, yeah. And there we go. That's one speaker out, and this is what it looks like. Let me disconnect the cable. And this is what the speaker looks like. It's like this little, it's in this little enclosure. It's really dusty, and this is the mechanism it uses, just in case you guys are wondering. And yeah, it has one big screw holding it together. And uh, yeah, my iMac is currently sitting on my bed because I have a friend over and he brought his computer. Hot oh, funny. How hard is it to take it? How hard is it to take it out? It's actually pretty hard, Kate. You have to, it's really in there, okay, so you can shut up now. Anyway, moving on, uh, still a five viewers, looks like, looks like so much of the, looks so much like the old pro speakers. Yeah, it does. These are the same types of speakers that they use, it's a Harman Kardon speakers. They sound really nice, by the way, so that's a, that's a huge upside with these computers, the speakers are very good. And they are the same as those, uh, Pro speakers from the iMac G4, so that's a, that's a good comparison. But anyway, we have to get the other speaker up too. So we got to do the same thing. I recommend just like going like this a bit, so it like bends. Then you can easily. Oh, that was pretty easy, pretty effortless too. So yeah, that's out. Uh, the speakers sound great. Um, if they aren't dry rotted to hell, yeah, it is pretty true. The the uh. Speakers do rot over time, and these ones are starting to show a bit of that. You can't really see because the quality on this camera absolutely sucks, but 
they do rot over time. And I did actually make a video of replacing the, the, the rotted speakers on an iMac. And it was a success, and they now sound better. So you do have dry rod speakers. I recommend you check out that video. It's pretty good. And oh, I see you have the CD in there. So I'm going to try fishing that out right now. So uh, yeah, so let's see if we can get it out. And here's a CD, and it's Avid Cinemas. Oh, what fun. Not like I already have a bunch of these. So we can just break that. Be gone, trash. Anyway, <laughs> I can't wait to see the reaction on this. They do sound decent. It does so much better than my current iMac really. That is true. Current iMac speakers aren't as good as these older ones. These older ones are just way too good. So my iMac is sitting on my bed, so what would be the best new speakers I can get? Uh you're not my uh you're, you're my sister and you don't have an iMac. Maybe I'll test my slot loaders. You might want to do that. But anyway, yes, yeah, so alright, so anyway, moving on. So we turn back to the uh the motherboard. Uh, we can uh, take this out here. So we have a, a screwdriver. So this is just a bunch of Phillips screws all around the board. They're all in like mis miscellaneous places. So yeah, you can. There's like this screw, this screw, this screw, this screw. A lot of screws. And also, if you're wondering, this power supply board here is actually a separate piece. There's a little connector here. The, and you can disconnect them from each other. So if your if, so if your motherboard ever dies or your power supply ever dies, you can easily like uh, replace it without having to replace the whole module. Uh, anyway, I've been trying to take my crappy Indigo one apart so long, and I've never been able to. That's kind of disappointing. Uh, if you have if it has like a problem or something, you could let me know, and I could give you a suggestion on how to fix it. Or maybe if it's not opening. If it doesn't open, you're probably you probably need to use a bit of, a bit of more force because sometimes old screws are a bit hard to uh, twist open. So uh, yeah, but anyway, uh, usually if like a screw has never been opened before since factory, it's usually very stiff. So yeah. Uh, okay, thanks for the info. Shut up, Kate. Anyway, uh, yeah. So. There's just a lot of screws in here, as I said before. So this might take a bit of time. And most of the screws in this computer are, are basically the same. But some of them are different. Like, very few of them are actually different. So I keep them organized, and just so you can remember. And uh, apparently my tangerine bottom case piece won't come off. Okay, that probably it's probably because it's maybe stuck on there, probably from age or something. Uh, it shouldn't be too difficult to take out. I mean, I've taken apart many slot loaders before. I actually have three, and I've, all, and I've taken them, and so far I've taken them all apart, including this one, just now, because that's what I'm doing. And uh, it's probably because it's like stuck on there or something. And now uh, my sister is being super annoying. Okay, if that's not Kate, it's probably my other sister. I have three sisters for any of you wondering. And one of them is kind of exposing themselves. And it's either my Kate, my sister Kate, or it's my sister, other, or it's my, one of my two other sisters. Yeah, I have three sisters. I don't have a brother. My life sucks. Thank you. Uh, stop using caps lock, please. Exactly. Please stop. But anyway, so if you get over here, like to this area, there's a... Uh, there's two screws at the end of this board, and those are under the speaker. So if you ever need to take out this whole board, there's two screws under the speaker here. So that's why we removed the speaker from the first place. And these two screws are different to all the screws in the, on the to the motherboard. And there's two of them up here, so you want to keep those separate. And now my sister's spamming. I'm going to block her. Just a moment. Just going to quickly block my sister so she stops talking. Sorry about this, everyone. Uh, I'm just gonna quickly block her. Uh, hide the user. Okay, so now she will not be. Uh, now she'll not be able to uh, do this anymore. Yep. All right, she's been taken care of. So now, now that we have that done, now we should easily be able to uh, lift this off. A bit of force. So now we also have the flat tip. Now the flat tip is in handy. Yeah, that is pretty funny. So yeah, but. Now we have the flat tip in handy, so what we want to do is we want to take off this, 
this cable, we have to take out this cable for the hard drive and the CD drive, and we also have to take out this cable, which is the power for the hard drive. Uh, so, yeah, we want to really wedge this down here. I'm not seeing Apple Week anywhere. Has, maybe someone, maybe someone uh, text him or something, contact him or something, because he seems to be missing out on this. So, yeah, but anyway, uh, so yeah, we have that out. Now we have to get this cable out. This cable is kind of a pain to get out. Well, I don't remember. Maybe it is. Maybe it is. Yeah, no, this one isn't, but I think it's this cable here, this cable, connect, directly connected to the hard drive, that's a pain. But anyway, now, the thing should easily lift out, and uh, yeah, there we go. So this is the motherboard. This is a 400 megahertz motherboard, and um, we have the uh, everything here. It has this interesting riser board, and I have a couple computers that don't have this riser board, and some that do it's kind of weird but anyway and also if you look on the bottom there's this connector here that connects to this connector here on the uh on the on the computer and that's probably for like the uh power the for the uh, power analog video board but uh yeah anyway let's put this board to the side now this is definitely a useful part because imacs often stop working and so those boards are pretty useful and valuable nowadays so anyway, next what we're going to take out is we're going to take out the uh, the hard drive and the CD drive. Now this is something I've never done on this computer or any iMac G3 slot loaders before, but it looks pretty easy, so I'm confident that it'll, I'll be able to do it. Uh, anyway, hey, do you recognize me from Vintage Apple? I'm the guy who always posts about the clamshells. I think I do. I don't really I don't really pay attention to people's uh, to people's uh, uh, usernames on Reddit because they're kind of in an inconvenient spot, but I probably remember you. I, I see a lot of clamshells on Vintage Apple, but uh, I'm hurt that you destroyed a Power Mac G3, by the way. Uh, I did not destroy a Power Mac G3. Uh, I don't know what you're talking about. Talking about. Oh, is he talking about uh, that other guy? Hey, who knows? I'll see in a moment, but anyway, I'm going to take out the uh, CD drive. All right, there we go. It takes a bit of uh, force, and uh, and you, and what if you, if you can't get a screw out and you don't want to strip it, you just push down really hard on the top, and then and like twist, and then it should come out pretty easily. Uh, I don't recommend to be in my opinion. I I would if you use like a power drill or something to get screws out. Um, it's a lot faster, and I recommend it on something that you don't care about. But if you don't if you, if you do care about it, I recommend using a regular screwdriver to prevent you from stripping it. And also, this, also this front part just came out, so that's not good. You can see here it's sort of wiggling freely. You deal with that in just a moment. So anyway, now we get these four screws. Uh, There's only the casing, uh, but still, personally, I love the power my Uh This. What year is the graphic from? I think 1999 was the year the graphic had a 400 megahertz processor. I'm pretty sure this is the older graphite because of some of the specs and stuff. This might be the 1999 version, but it could also be an early 2000 version. So uh, I don't know. It's it's an interest. It's interesting, but uh, seems like someone destroyed a Power Mac G3. I don't remember that anywhere. So uh, yeah, but oh no, buffering. Uh, it doesn't seem to be buffering on my end. Or on my computer at least, but uh, it's probably just your Wi-Fi feed. Let's hope it comes on soon. But uh, yeah, so here's the hard drive out. It has this stupid little cable here that connects to the power board that I'm gonna try and get out because it's a use because this hard drive would be useful. But yeah, there we go, got it out. So yeah, now we have a cable and we have a hard drive. All, all pretty useful things. Maybe if I was rebuilding another iMac G3, I'd need that cable. So. Yeah, all right, now we've got the other cable out for the CD drive and hard drive. We'll put that in there. And finally, now we have to get out the uh, CD drive. And to the looks of it, there seem to be screws on the outside here that'll easily come out. Uh, oh, I totally agree. It's a beautiful, and I like, the, I like it too, but the casing was cracked and the in internals were screwed. My neighbor gave it to me after pulling it from, from a skin. Okay, so it seems this guy did break the Power Mac G3, which I don't know. I don't really support stuff like that because, I mean, they don't make them anymore, and they're going to 
they're going to keep getting rarer and rarer each day. People keep doing this, but uh, I don't know. I mean, if it was really destroyed like that, then I guess it would be fine. I mean, I might check out the video later, so. Anyway, we're going to get the CD drive out. The CD drive seems to be weirdly held in these brackets. And you'll see once I get the actual thing out, so. Just, it's held in by four screws, by the way, which is usually the norm with things like this. If you're wondering about the setup, I actually moved my workbench farther to the, um, all the way up to the wall. And it's actually, I actually like it a lot more because it's a lot more spacious in this room now that the workbench is moved up. So I think I'm going to keep it this way. The only downside is it's a bit difficult to uh, plug in cables and stuff in the back, but it doesn't matter. You didn't mention the iBook I smashed. Though. Jesus Christ, this guy's on like a vintage Apple massacre or something. Remind me of Garrett Clarge at this point. Jesus. Maybe stop talking about this. Oh, God. He even retracted the message. Jesus. Oh, God. That's not going to look good. But anyway, uh, we have five watching again. We had eight watching a couple minutes ago. And then we had seven. And then it jumped to five. And then it went back to seven. And then now it's kind of... Now it's kind of abandoned, but we still have some people watching, so that's good. Yes, yeah, so we have this thing for you, and it doesn't seem to want to come out. Probably this bracket is just a bit tight, but... You know, I think I might just take this whole bracket off, because there's also screws for here. So I'm, take, I'm doing a teardown on this thing. It wouldn't be a teardown if I didn't take every single screw out, so that's what I'm going to do. And they all seem to be pretty easy to accessible to, so that should, that should be fine. What's nice about this screwdriver that is that it's magnetic, so taking out things is a breeze. Uh, I think Avid Cinema discs are kind of a meme of this channel. Yeah, I think so too. I destroyed another one in the uh, iMac G4 uh, documentary. The reason why I'm doing this is I have like 30 of them. I have like a pile of 30 of them that I got from the school. I've been trying to sell them on eBay for 99 cents each and nobody's buying them. I just want them gone. But now I feel like they're just completely worthless. In fact, let me get the pile right now. It's in this shit, it's in this drawer over here. But uh, yes, yeah, so this is my uh, this is my collection of Avid Cinema discs. Literally, I have a whole stock of them. It was a clam It was a clamshell, but it was ruined too. If it was, a, I can't remember. Dead motherboard, bleeding, and cracked screens, the cracked casing, broken keyboard, beyond repair. Okay, whatever. Uh, oh no, CD CD ROM. Oh, and no CD-ROM drive either, either. Oof. I mean, even if it is completely broken, I wouldn't smash it anyway. Um, I mean, I mean, some. I mean, it's still again. They don't make it anymore, and they're just getting rarer and rarer. But whatever. Anyway, yeah. So this is my whole stock of Avid Cinema discs. If anyone wants one, let me know. It's basically just video editing software. I haven't tried it out, but whatever. Anyway. I'll Check it out. Now it's just people arguing about this other guy smashing vintage computers, but whatever. Not my thing. Anyway, now we just have this whole bracket out, and we have a CD drive in here, which I want to get out, but it doesn't seem to want to come out. I feel like there's might be, there might be one small screw that I'm missing. Oh, no, there it is. So yeah, anyway, here's the uh, CD drive, and as you can see, these are the brackets it was mounted on, as I was talking about before. This was connected directly on this thing so yeah that's two extra parts that's but yeah that's two extra parts so see i'll put that aside now moving on so we also have a uh the headphone jack module and we also have the power button module and what i've been thinking about doing is buying a, a white power button for an imac g3 and then and then like maybe uh, overclocking my snow so that it'll look like a 700 megahertz and it'll be as valuable as one. Because 700, because if you didn't know, the fastest version of the iMac G3 is a 700 megahertz model. And it's actually very rare and they go for a lot on eBay. So if I can make like a convincing looking 700 megahertz, it'd be pretty neat. So uh, I did keep some of the parts like the logo and handle. Okay, good. Oh yeah, actually speaking of which, I have a clamshell too, if I can pull it out. If you did keep the logo, I have a question. I have this clamshell, and it's missing the leaf, and it's the most infuriating thing ever. So maybe if you had the leaf and you'd be willing to sell it to me for, like, five bucks or so, that would be nice. So, But anyway, yeah, this is, this is it, if you're wondering. 
Uh, wait, you got a lime? No, I do not have a lime. Oh, he has a lime. I think he has a lime. I think he has all the colors because he posts about. Because I've seen posts on Reddit of some people having like all the iBooks, and I bet he probably has all of them. It was used for a part. It was used for parts for a key lime graph I had never read. Okay, that's good. At least save the parts. I feel like people just destroy things like that just to get them used, to be honest. But anyway, uh, moving on. So I think I'm just going to take out these two things because why not? One of them seems to be. Uh, one of them doesn't seem to have any screws, but this one has one screw, so I'm just going to take this out here. So uh, yeah, we got that out now. And then we can just pull this out. Oh, and this seems to be connected. Uh, I might actually, yeah, I'm going to leave that thing in mean, this. I don't really want to touch, but anyway, so moving to the front of the thing, uh, we have this whole thing just freely here. I just believe from the smash one into another blueberry and sold the apple, and sold the apple piece. Oh, never mind then. But anyway, yes, yeah, so we have this here sort of dangling. So we might want to just take that out now. As you can see, this is part of the beige piece that's here. There's beige piece here and here, and this is actually part of this, but it's broken off. So that's how broken this is. Let's see if I can... Oh, there we go. Now this is out. So this is the front of the iMac G3. Uh, this part here is not is going to be taken off because this is actually part of these two things here. And it's broken, so there's no point in keeping it on. And how does this come off? Does this like have a snap somewhere? So I want to keep the uh, translucent piece because it seems to be fine. Uh, oh yeah, there seems to be these uh, cosmetic pieces here with the screws. So I'm gonna move that. I believe that's how you take these apart normally, and they're not broken. But this is already so broken that it doesn't even matter at this point. It comes apart by itself. So. Anyway, take this apart, and there we go. Oh, and the power button came out, too. It was part of here. I might actually get that in a moment. Uh, yeah, he's he, he, yeah, he right now, by the way, you have all the colors. Nice. I might want to collect all the iBook colors at some point. I'm back, finally. Finally, Jack Septicai is back, or Apple Geek, as everyone calls him. Looks like the tape and polish that... It's like tape and tolerance to perform a 58 CD. Yeah, this is basically what this is, except I'm taking this completely apart. So, Anyway, so after removing, removing those cosmetic pieces, there's two screws holding this uh, translucent piece onto the beige piece. And thank God I didn't like pull it like this. Otherwise, it would have snapped the whole thing, which I was almost about to do. But thankfully, I didn't. So we're just move these screws quickly. Or maybe they'll just break off. Who knows, but... Yeah, this translucent piece seems to be in excellent condition, which is really nice. But, uh, yeah, yeah, one problem with computer manufacturers is that they like to mount, uh, mount screw, metal screws onto plastic, uh, onto plastic, on plastics, like this. And one problem with this is that over time, the plastic gets brittle, and then the screws break off, and then the whole thing's ruined. But anyway, here's the front piece. You can toss that, because that's useless now. But uh, we have this part here, and this is actually pretty useful, and these are kind of good. It has the Apple logo here, which seems to be interchangeable. Yep, I took just took it out. And yeah, you can actually interchange these Apple logos, which I didn't know, which is pretty neat. So, I'm going to put that to the side. And, uh, yeah, so now we just kind of have, like, this sad-looking thing here, which doesn't even look like an iMac anymore. We have the CRT. Everything works on this. I'm gonna sack, but I'm gonna try getting as much as we can. We do it. Okay. Uh, do you have recycling centers in England? Uh, it's very damn hard to buy things in England. Do you have recycling centers in England? When I look at England, you may find cheap, cheap work cubes a lot. Oh wow, that seems pretty cool. Uh, we do in my country, but I can't vouch for the rest of the country. We have recycling centers here. I'm in the U.S. However. Most of the recycling centers don't let you in without like some sort of membership or permit or anything. And what the ones that do let you in usually never have anything. It's usually just a bunch of useless CRTs, a bunch of like broken monitors and laptops that are worthless, just in like a huge pallet. And then there's also like a like a stack of identical computers from like a school or something. I've never found anything Apple related at, at my recycling center, but whatever. 
And I'd rather just buy them, to be honest, because it's probably working better than just getting it broken from somewhere. But anyway, uh, this is the screen and everything. So I want to turn this over, but I don't want this part, these two parts, to break or something. But well, actually, we do have screws over here, so we might just get that. So and we do still have the back case on, which is actually cracked, but. And I do want to get that off. Maybe I can try fixing it. It's not cracked. Pieces haven't broken off of it, but it is still cracked. So, yeah. But. Anyway, more plastic. But, uh, yeah. So, what we want to do here now is uh, we want to remove all these screws along the uh, along the computer. So, that's what I'm going to do now. And we have two screws on this side, two screws on that side, and then one screw in the middle by the big, scary CRT top. So... And then we'll remove that. And most of this does seem salvageable. The only thing that's not salvageable is the CRT support, as I said before. It's just the thing's complete, the thing's completely wasted. Uh, we don't have any recycling centers where we can just buy them. We just dump them. Yeah, that makes sense. Where I where I'm, they only take garbage, not computers. Hey, dude. Oh, hey, 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 House House of Moss J. Nice to see you. You finally turned up. Take the garbage and tech down here but yeah we we have a we have a service here too that takes our garbage and recycling which is why i don't go to the recycling center that often only if i can convince my parents to or i have a good reason to but uh yeah anyway uh steve's steve stream ran a bit long wall yeah so uh steve from mac 84 he had a stream as well and no i didn't think it was going to go that long but it did it went like three hours which is a really long time so so his stream is kind of competing with mine so but at least uh at least it's over now so we'll have more viewers uh oh hi jay fancy seeing you here nice anyway yes yeah, so we're going to continue taking this part uh we seem to have uh this whole part freely here so i guess at this point we'll just turn this over so ooh. Well, actually, wait, I think that whole thing is going to, like, fall through, so. Anyway, another plastic piece here, throw that away. Uh, oh, there's an, a single screw here, just keeping the whole thing together. Yeah, I don't know if I should even need that, because I feel like the whole switch is just going to fall through onto this case piece here. I'm going to see if I can try turning it around first. Ugh. So I can uh, easily take this apart. And the CRT is moving freely. It's a bit scary. This whole project is scary. I've never fully taken apart one of these before, but I have enough knowledge to know what I'm doing and what not to touch and everything. And I do also not discharge the CRT, which is good too. So, yes, we have this here now. I'm going to actually crouch down and see if I can get this screw over here. I'm not sure if I will be able to, but maybe. Uh, yeah, I think I can. I think that plastic piece is great. Oh god, this is a hard one. Uh, what am I doing? Because at this moment, he realized he screwed up. Ugh. Uh, let's see. You, if you could have any vintage Apple computer, what would it be? Uh, I would probably get, uh, I'd probably have like a, maybe a, a Quadra 950 or something, something cool like that, or maybe a Tam. I have a Mac TV already, so that's one of my dream computers off the list. Uh, so this is Demolition Project, eh? Yeah, it basically is. I'm not trying to destroy it. There's just a bunch of these, like, plastic beige pieces that have, like, disintegrated and shifting. So I'm basically just removing all the crap and just basically taking the whole thing apart so yeah that's basically it uh what else we got uh should i make my windows xp for my tough book and attempt to make a good usb yeah maybe you should i recommend 98 98 is a pretty fun operating system because you do lots of stuff with it it's basically mac OS 9 on windows so pretty neat uh taking off this piece uh, yeah, there we go. This top piece is off now, and this is what it looks like. So as you can see, there's like a crack here. It's like a crack here. There's a crack here. 
And it's not that bad, actually. I might save this. I'm probably going to save this. It's not that bad. And then there's a bit more beige piece here. Uh, the rest of this seems to be pretty good. There's no, like, broken anything. There's this thing. I don't know what this is, but toss. Awesome. Like, a whole load of plastic just fell out. And this is the first time I've ever been exposed to a on XCRT, so a bit scared. Oh, we got the microphone over here. That's very neat. Might take that in a moment. Uh, oh, I see. It's, there's no screws holding this on. You just have to pull it up like this. It should come out. There we go. That's pretty neat. So throw that away. And uh, yeah, so there's some screws up here from the beige piece, which just broke off from brittleness when I took that out. So we'll just. I think I'll just leave those in so I don't lose the screws, and we'll just put this to the side. All right, moving on. We seem to just have all the uh, scary components that people never usually touch, but I'm going to touch them. So well, I'm not going to touch them. I'm going to, like, take it out. But oh, yeah, I also got the microphone out just now. So put that to the side. And I keep stepping on crap on the floor. Thankfully, I'm wearing socks. Me and Agent Mac are making a series on vintage Apple. We're thinking about doing something on CRT, Apple computers. Would you be interested in helping with the video? Yeah, sure. We'll talk about it later. That, that sounds pretty fun. Uh, oh, hello, all. You seem to be here. Bring chicken nugget in. Uh, should I? All right. Who wants me to leave quickly to go get chicken nugget? Uh, raise your hand or just say yes. Uh, can you clean my fix, my fix performa? Uh, maybe. But I'd love to participate in like a vintage Mac, CRT Mac thing. That'd be pretty cool. I have a lot of really neat systems. I have a Color Classic, Mac TV, Mac SE, more iMac G3s, uh, a lot of stuff. I didn't have just regular CRTs. Ooh, an iMac. Oh, my God. Hello, Steve. What are you doing here? Probably got bored of your stream, I see. <laughs> uh, nice. Yeah, so we are taking apart this iMac. Kind of got destroyed in shipping, so we're basically parting out the whole thing. We've almost got everything out. We just have to get out a couple. We just have to get out the... Uh, high voltage CRT parts. And we're just trying to save as much as we can here. So yeah. Well I got tired of streaming. Now I'm watching. <laughs> That's fun. Streaming isn't that difficult. I mean it's kinda uh, it's kinda long and stuff, so whatever. But anyway, so we're just gonna at this point we're just gonna discharge the CRT. I did have this plugged in and running yesterday because I wanted to check what's on the hard drive before I took it apart just in case there's anything important. Oh god, this is scary. Frick, I don't want to fall. <laughs> Alright, that's all good. Ooh, scary. Jesus. Uh, I have two sort of interesting CRT max. Three and a half hours straight was rough. Haha. Uh -huh. Yeah, that sounds pretty rough. The longest I've ever streamed is like maybe close to two hours. Three hours is kind of a lot. So, yeah, just discharge it first. Yes, that's exactly what I'm going to do. So I have this special uh, tool I made because I don't have alligator clips because I'm too lazy to buy them, which is basically this entire channel. So I bought, I got I got the screwdriver, and I electric taped this uh, cable onto this. So basically this works a lot better with compacts because what, what I do is I connect this part to the uh, ground lug of the CRT on a compact, and I connect this part to the this part, but I don't actually know where I should ground this. Uh, if anyone has any suggestions, let me know. Hey Charlie, stream on Mixer for like an hour. You will watch after. Will you watch after you are done? Uh, perhaps. I got an alligator clip at Home Depot for like three dollars, but I had to hunt and find them at the up in the aisle. Yeah, I have a Home Depot pretty close to me. It's a pretty modern Home Depot. They made it a couple. Uh, they made it like maybe a year or two. Ago. They moved in like a year or two ago, and I've been there a couple times. It's pretty nice. I haven't thought about. I haven't thought about getting alligator clips there. Uh, wow. Okay. Anyway, uh, so where should I connect the, uh, so who has a suge suggestion on where to connect this? I'm thinking about connecting it here. This is usually where uh, you connect it on the compacts. Uh, which game would like to include my uh, whatever? Uh, this is why I hate living in England and not America. Not many parts are computers. Yeah, when I used to live in uh, you know, Europe, Switzerland in particular, there was not a lot of vintage Macs. There was a lot of portrait displays and stuff like that, like some interesting things. But I wasn't really too into collecting back then. I'm a lot more into collecting now. And America is just probably the best place to do Mac collecting because that's where everything happened. And yeah, I'd like to. Sounds really interesting. Yeah. Any of the screws around the frame? Okay, so I guess I'll just ground it right here. So, uh, 
So we'll just take this out of bit. Oh, actually, this is kind of loose. Oh, that's just connected to the beige beef. Whatever. Uh, hmm, I think I'll just. Yeah, I think I'll just connect it here. We'll just put this through here. Make sure it's connected. There we go. That's in good enough. All right, now for the scary part. Hey, I live in Phil Finland, and there's rarely any vintage Max for sale. Yeah, that's unfortunate. He does have a Tangerine, though, which is pretty neat. Those are kind of rare. That's his. Pro that's pretty neat computer already. So, I mean, I think that's pretty nice to have. Just like one single Tangerine Chicken Nugget Max. Same in England. Yeah, probably the case. But I mean, England seems kind of populated with Mac collectors. Um, for any of you who don't know, there's this collector called Jason who has a channel called Jason's Mac Museum. And what and he has like this huge collection of vintage Macs that he's just been accumulating. He does he used to do videos and stuff. Now he doesn't do videos anymore. I don't know what happened to him, but go check him out. He's England based, it seems, so that's pretty cool. Hope you're wearing ru rubber sole shoes. I'm actually not wearing any shoes at all, but I might actually go put them on, maybe. Jason is in Australia. Oh, that's news to me. Uh tell them about my G3 discharge story. Anyway, so yeah, Apple Geek or Jack Septai in the chat, he tried to discharge a CRT. He kept shocking himself on the CRT for some reason. And he kept wondering, why am I shocking myself? And then he looks, and it, the thing's still plugged in. So he's trying to discharge a CRT when it's plugged in. And he kept shocking himself, and he had no idea why. It was crazy. But uh, yeah, put them on. Yeah, I think I'll go put on my shoes quickly. So I'll be back in just one moment. All right, everyone, I'm back. Hope you missed me. Uh, can beat that once. Ouch. Who was once? Welcome, tell subscribers. I'm Charlie's cousin. Nice, nice to meet you. All. Yeah, that's Ollie. I did a lot. I made I made a lot of videos with him. But uh, yeah, so I got my uh, NASA flip flops, and these I believe are made of rubber. But who cares? I'm gonna wear them anyway, just for extra support. Uh, keep the keep one hand behind your back. Yes. Okay, I'll keep one hunt in behind my back. Anyway, now for the scary part. This hasn't been plugged in for like 24 hours or so. Uh, that doesn't mean it's completely discharged. Sometimes it is. Uh, good you're wearing NASA. Yes, Ollie. He's a space geek, so <laughs> he likes... I'm actually wearing a NASA t-shirt as well, as you can see. So this is kind of NASA day, which is pretty funny. So, yeah, you can't really see it, but this I bought at the same store. It was at H&M. I don't know why they have NASA stuff. Maybe the NASA logo kind of, kind of became like free, uh, like a free, uh, like maybe a free non-copyrighted logo anymore. I don't know. Whatever. But anyway, let's just charge this thing. So as you can see, this is the su suction cup thing here. And what you want to do is you want to put the screwdriver underneath the suction cup so that you, you so that you touch this metal piece on the inside. And once it, there's like a spark, or once you've taken it off, you should be good. So this is grounded. So let's do it. My hand behind my back. I put some good content. And uh, yeah, it doesn't seem to be anything. I'm gonna try to, I mean, I'm touching it, but nothing's happening. So that just means it's discharged. I forgot how to take these out. I believe it's like held in by two clicks. This guy I bought my box Emacs. Off, I had to discharge the CRT for me the first time. It was unplugged and he didn't use a screwdriver and tried to with his hands and and was launched across the room. Oh Jesus! Now I'm just scared. I'm just I'm literally sweating at this point. So no, but I believe these are held in by like two clamps that you have to like bend a bit. So oh, we got ten people watching. Nice. Try to pry carefully up. Yeah, I'm gonna try that. I have a question, Steve. Have you ever uh, have you ever taken apart like a CRT before? Ever taken one out of the case? The only ones I've ever done are uh, compacts and uh, this. Okay. Still nothing happening. I'm gonna take a look. Oh, I see. There's like a clamp, like on the compact. Um, I'm being kind of stupid. Uh, but yeah, I saw. So there's like a. 
Africa. Yeah, if I have to pry here. Yeah, come on. There's a clam. There's like two clams doing this. Yes, I haven't discharged it because mine is already discharged. All right, nice. So there's like two clams here. Kind of annoying. Jesus, this is difficult. I want to use my hand, but I also don't want to die. So, uh, yeah. Uh, use two screwdrivers at once. That's a that's a good idea. Let me go see if I have another one quickly. Just across the room. One nice part about being in a small space is that it's easier to get around and stuff. So that's nice. But I don't have another screwdriver, but I do have this T15 Torx driver here. Which I use for opening up compacts and stuff. So, uh, what else have we got? Should be discharged now. The ground, the ground is good. So, uh, or the or the pliers, you can get them under the top. Yeah, I might try that too. But uh, I want to make. I want to really make sure that this is a discharge. I'm like sitting under there a bit more. Yeah, it's definitely touching. So, should be discharged now. But uh. I might use plot pliers, but I also don't want to damage this. Because I'm hoping to salvage while everything is working. Ugh. Alright, hand behind my back. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to use one screwdriver to keep it up, and then another one just to pry it out. So, very difficult to do this. Oh, uh, let's see. Well, it's not working on the iMac. Sorry, I missed the start. Oh, yeah, so nothing... So everything on this iMac works. The only thing that doesn't work is a uh, is a C, is the slot-loading CD drive, which is this thing. It doesn't read or eject. So I might do a video where I try fixing that or even a stream if you guys want. So it's cracked in shipping. Yeah, this whole thing was cracked in shipping, as you probably know already. So that's why I'm taking it apart. So I'm hoping to get a donor computer at some point, or even just use the parts in general for another system if I ever get one, so, uh, yeah. For example, I might get a ruby at some point, because that's one of my favorite G3 colors, and I still haven't gotten one yet, but I'm hoping to get one soon. And there's a few cheap ones for sale at the moment on eBay, so I might see if I can get one, but... God, this is probably the worst part about this whole thing. Okay, let me see if I can fry this up. Ah, full concentration. I want to damage this again. Oh, I think I got one of them out. Watch. And then behind my back. Oh, God. I think I got one of the prongs out because it's like half out. It was cracked and shipping. Poor iMac. Yeah, cracked more like smashed. Yeah. So as you can see, there's like beige CRT support. This is like the top and this is the bottom. These are supposed to be connected. And they're kind of broken off, and there's like a lot of pieces on the floor as well, which is a good thing I'm wearing sandals. So, yeah, well, I guess you like pull on this, like so. And yes, we got it out finally. That's way too long. Just touch this just in case. I'm gonna get all the ammo out of here just in case. And yeah, now it should be discharged. I'm still not gonna touch anything because I don't really want to. I feel like touching those copper coils with this just just to be extra cautious. Uh, watch the eight, this big guy disassembling the G3. Yeah, he he uses rubber gloves. I don't use rubber gloves because I haven't bought any because I'm lazy once again. And uh, yeah, but I'm gonna touch this copper coil. Yeah, that's that should be discharged. Everything seems to be discharged. Discharged. So that's good. Uh, oh boy. Oh well, hello, Texier. Nice to see you here. Uh, we have eight watching. Pretty nice. I think the highest we had today was 10, so that's very nice. I mean, how are you doing, TechCR? I haven't talked to you in a while. Uh, yeah, but anyway. Uh, now what? It seems to be... Oh, yeah. There's some more screws on the other side that we should take out. So, uh, moving this again. Oh, right. I should probably take the screwdriver out. There we go. But, uh, yeah, moving on. We have two screws here, and we have two screws up here. Uh, these two screws up here seem to be cracked. So I'm going to use, actually, I'm going to remove these first, just, to, just because. Why not? 
Super Chat seems to be quiet at the moment. He's out. Oh, that kind of broke. Oh well. Uh, okay, now let's just get these two big screws out here. I think I might just leave the board in, to be honest, because, I mean, this all seems to just be one piece. I mean, you can probably take it out, but I don't even know if I really want to. Uh, I'm not going to bother disassembling my G3. Yeah, I don't see a reason to disassemble these. I mean, it's 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 kind of difficult. Well, it's not really difficult if you know what you're doing, but I wouldn't bother, to be honest. I mean, if your G3 is working fine, there's no, there's no real reason to actually disassemble it, unless you're just super bored. So, uh, yeah, anyway, ugh, this whole thing is just kind of stuck, I guess, I guess. Ugh, I don't like it. Okay. So remove those screws. It seems to be just a bit more jittery. There's this thing. I don't know what that is, but... Uh, oh, that just seems to be... just seems to disconnect this from the CRT itself. Uh... I don't even know if I should keep going. How long have we been streaming for? It's been almost an hour. Uh, yeah, nobody should bother just assembling this. Uh, yeah, it seems to be about an hour. Uh, let's see. Some screws in there. Well, there's two screws in there by all the, by all the scary bits. Uh, there's one there and there. Take off the uh, this plastic piece from the uh, to the metal piece down there. Uh, I might take those out actually. So this is already discharged, so I don't have to be scared, even though it looks super scary. I don't know why, but like CRT components always look super scary. I don't know why. If this assembly was hard. I think the assembly might be harder. Yeah, maybe, but the assembly is usually a bit easier because you know where everything goes because. You've already taken it apart, so you know how everything works and everything goes. But yeah, so here's one of those screws I was talking about. One problem with reassembling things is that you sometimes forget like where certain screws go. So you'll have like maybe two or three screws that you uh, that you don't know where to put them. They say the clamshells are hard, but I can replace the hard drive and have all it all together in 30 minutes. It isn't even that. It isn't even by bending the metal cover. Yeah, I've never taken apart a clamshell before. I've never had a real reason to. I have one clamshell, and I've always wanted to get more, but they're just kind of overpriced and expensive. So I don't think I've ever, I'm ever going to buy any more, to be honest. Man. Yeah, removing those two screws did nothing. So, uh, yeah. So what do you guys want to do at this point? Do you just want to... Do you think I should keep going, or do you think I should end, stop this here and maybe do something else? Because we could do something else just to pack it pass the time, because I think this might be done for now. Now uh, let's wait. Alright, it seems to be quiet, I guess, but I think, honestly, I'm just going to leave it here for now. Uh, it, 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 the, everything else in here seems to be fine. It's, nothing's, like, broken or anything, so I'm going to see if I can position this so I can you can easily see everything. Now it's kind of my hand. Uh, yeah, I should just end it here. Okay. All right, so now that we've concluded this, uh, we can do a few more things if you guys are interested. Uh, I have a I have a couple of Macs you can maybe play with. Uh, I've got the grape. i got the snow. I have the blueberry. I have the Mac TV, Color Classic, SE, even the iMac G4, but who cares about that? Uh yeah, we have five people watching, so this is kind of abandoned now. So I guess a lot of people just left. So that's a di bit disappointing. But uh, uh, let's see. Not, nothing seems to be. Nobody seems to be responding. Maybe bring Chicken Nugget in. Uh, maybe. I think I'm just gonna move this out of the frame for now. So it'll be the last time you see this. So goodbye. Ugh. Alright, put that to the side, and here's the mess it made. Lots of these plastic random pieces that are probably from nothing here, and uh, they kind of screwed with my foam bit. There's like scratches everywhere, so that's lovely. 
Uh, I'm probably getting an iMac G3 soon. That's pretty neat. I have one already. And I don't use it that much because I don't really have a use for it. And it's kind of boring. Mine is the one that doesn't run Mac OS 9. So uh, it's not really too much interesting about it. Uh, so anyway, if anyone has any questions, you can ask me. Or maybe I can pull out another system that we can take a look at. Because we do have, like, I could probably stream for, like, another half an hour if you guys really wanted to. It's only 8 o'clock, so if you guys are interested, you can, uh, can, uh, maybe we can take a look at some other systems. You know, it seems to be, like, a clear PC or something. I don't know. Whatever. We just decide. Yeah, we might actually end the stream now if nobody wants to do anything. So I'm going to wait for a moment. Yeah, I'm gonna leave now. Yeah, I think to be honest, the stream's kind of over. So, uh, so uh, yeah, I guess we're gonna end the stream here. So I'm gonna quickly pick up the camera so you can take a look at everything. So yeah, anyway, here's everything that we got from this sacrifice. Uh, we got a whole lot of parts. We got a got a front case. We got a back case. We got a bottom case. So uh, we got an iBook, an unrelated iBook. We got a bracket, speakers, metal piece, motherboard, drives, everything. So this thing's pretty, uh, oh yeah, this isn't actually a Macintosh SE box, it's a Mac Classic box. Funny thing about this is that when I bought it, uh, I never expected it to come with the box. It just came when it, it just came shipped in the box, which is pretty interesting. But uh, yeah, so anyway, uh, yeah, so we're going to end the stream now. So I hope you all enjoyed this and... I'm probably going to be doing some more streams um, this week. I might even do one next weekend if anyone has any suggestions on what we could possibly do. But uh, at least those boxes look to be in decent shape. Yeah, the classic box is in the worst shape, but my other two boxes are pretty good. I have an Image Writer 2 box and a Macintosh LC box. They're both in pretty good shape. The Image Writer box isn't in the best shape, but whatever. But uh, Oh, nice. Anyway, uh, we got a Mac iMac G3 parts and a random clamshell appeared. Amazing. And, uh, yeah, I can show you a bit, a bit more around if you're interested. I also have a, uh, a Graphite iBook G3 box here, which is actually from my school as well, because they were just going to throw it away. And I had to take it because it's pretty interesting. But this is what it looks like. I've never, I've ne I have a newer Image Writer box. That's pretty neat. But anyway, here's the uh, iBook. This Image Writer. Yeah, there's nothing in this here. Uh, there's there's no eyeball. It's just a bunch of random crap. It's just alarm clocks and some other stuff. So I just use it for storage. But the image writer box. This is actually an older image writer box. It's like for the. This is like made for the uh, to go with the Apple twos and stuff. So that's all there is to show there. Uh, I do have a few other things. Uh, there's a also an iBook G4 box here. This is the snow. I have the iBook G4 itself. It's right here. I've been using it all this time as like a, a stand to make the camera slightly higher so that it looks nicer. But uh, And then I also have an accessory kit for uh, PowerBook 180C, so that's pretty neat too. Uh, oh, sweet. You have the, the lower image writer box. That you have. That is what I have. Nice. Nice rainbow Apple logo on the back. Did you make custom make that? Oh yeah, this. So I this Apple logo on the back, I actually bought this online. You can still buy these on like eBay and stuff. And you can buy them for like newer MacBooks as well. It's pretty neat. I got this a while ago, so it's pretty cool. Those accessory kits are always sweet. Yeah, these accessory kits are pretty cool. They have like the little picture on them and the book and everything. And it's pretty neat. So yeah, it's that. And I never, and when I found this in, at the school, they let me have it. I had the accessory kit and everything. It was like right next to it. It was the only one they had, unfortunately. Apparently, a lot of teachers used to have these, but they kind of got rid of the other ones, unfortunately. I have the same VST floppy box. Ha. Huh? Yeah. Also, this. I bought this as well. This is, I bought this new old stock on eBay as well. I wanted to come with all the things and stuff, like the little, so. That's why I bought it with the box. And here's the floppy drive itself, if you're wondering. And it's currently paired up with the grape over here. And sorry, the camera's kind of weird. It's super odd to have a camera in the middle of the device. So, 
Never hurts to have a floppy drive. Yeah, the floppy drive on the iMac G3 has been very useful for like transferring software and stuff to older systems like the Classic and the and the Color Classic Mac TV, which are actually up here. But uh, yeah, so I do also have a few other consoles here, which aren't really Apple. And then over here, I have the uh, the uh, forementioned 180C, which works okay. And uh, everything works on that, so that's pretty nice. It's starting to show some uh, some uh, plastic. It's starting to show some like broken plastic a bit sometimes. Like it's uh, like as you can see, it, like bends a bit like, when it's not supposed to. But whatever, it's okay now. So at this point, I think we're probably just gonna end the stream here. Uh, there's not too much else to show. I might do like a whole stream just based on a on a just based on a showing you around. Nice. I have the standard 180 model. Yeah, the 180 model is also pretty neat. The 180C, I prefer it more because it has the nice crisp color screen. And it's a bit more rare and it's kind of nice. Where's the power book that was destroyed by a kid? Oh, yeah. That one. I actually don't even know if I still where that is. There is a power book that was destroyed by some kid at this convention. Uh, actually, where is it? I can't believe I can't find it. That's weird. Uh, uh, where did I put it? It was broken. Uh, I glued it back together. Oh, I know where it is. It's upstairs in my room. That's where it is. My 180 is suffering from the tunnel vision issue. Oh, yeah, that's not very good. The The newer color screens are a passive matrix display, so they, they're a lot more reliable. And I, I haven't had to deal with any of those uh, uh, PowerBook screen issues before because uh because i don't have any of the black and white power books and my uh 190 cs hasn't been destroyed yet as it hasn't had a broken screen yet which is upstairs and that was the one that was destroyed by that kid from before but uh yeah so that seems to be it with that yeah if anyone has any other questions you can let me know so uh and you see now five people still on uh, but yeah, I think we're going to end the stream now for real, unless there's any more issues, unless there's any more, uh, questions, but, uh, I think I'm just going to end the stream here. It's getting a bit late, so, yeah, but, uh, yeah, I think I'm going to end it here. So, my 145 has great condition except for no hard drive. Yeah, I remember that thing. I remember, I remember you, you, um, we were able to find the listing and then we bid it on it as like a joke and then you had to bid higher it was kind of, i remember how hilarious that was i was with ollie when that happened and that was kind of funny but uh yeah anyway so i guess we're gonna end the stream here so that'll do it and thank you all so much for your support and for tuning into the stream uh i i, I did this uh tear down and it was pretty it was a lot easier than i expected but uh yeah, so thanks, thank you all for coming and i will see you all hopefully in another stream maybe a week or so so if you have any suggestions for another stream, let me know on Discord or in YouTube comments or something, or I don't know. But anyway, so that'll do it. Thanks for watching, and goodbye.